I want to talk about the Leafs going the Leafs. out. And- By the way, another guy, another guy just sent me a note and said, I hope Kippy's paying you well, because when you're on, he, he agrees with me 100%. He loves the show when I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're thankful for that. Can we just I get love into listening the, to you when I'm on. The nuts and bolts here. <laughs> the Leafs paid a hefty price for two forwards that no one will argue that uh, uh, they don't make them better. Uh, and then we see Boston, pretty much the same type of, type of package for two guys that will make them better. Uh, Orlov, top four guy. Ryan O'Reilly, a top six guy. Um, do the Leafs have to do anything to kind of match what Boston did last night? Well, like Orlov's a guy that's sort of become a really all round guy and that he's, he's a defender and, and he can move the puck and, and create. So I thought it was a great addition. I really did. I mean, I know they were talking Gabrikov. I think that, I think they did better with this, uh, with this pickup, you know, I know it was, it, it was, you know, it's a tough price, but they spread the picks out. And, you know, um, I, I, Boston's better. Yeah, they're better because of it. And Ryan O'Reilly, look, I, I mean, I watched the Buffalo game that night. And it was, it was exciting to see that. I can only imagine how Kyle and Brendan felt watching that performance by, by Ryan O'Reilly, who has proven to be, you know, you know, he's a Stanley cup winner and it, it was a good move. I, I, I see where they have them in the top six. I I really would like to see them set up their third line to be a really top third line. And you know, I I know Tavares. He seems to want to play the wing. I I sort of was I'm caught off guard by that. I'd love to see him in that three hole with, you know, Chari's a good pickup too for the fourth line. I I like the move. I like both moves a lot. You know, so now we have to wait to see what Tampa does and what the Rangers do because the the East is loading up, and uh, it's going to be an unbelievable playoff. Tampa, I mean, they'd be a little nervous about this move. They would be. Are you surprised that Dubis got aggressive like that, and do you expect he'll continue to? Like, is it enough now, or do you think you got to continue to sell out assets and, and get even better knowing that Boston is as loaded as they are? Well, I think I still think they've got a, you know, there's still a major question uh, with their blue line. Um, they, I still think they need another top guy on their back end, and that's tough to do right now. And I think that's got to be something they're considering. And then we come back to the same old problem: is their goaltending going to be good enough to to beat Vasilevsky and company? That's that's still a big question mark, but I, you know, you, you love how Kyle got aggressive. Yeah. I know they're giving up a ton of assets and they had given up a ton prior to this with the Felino deal and, and the other deals they've done. So this Kyle had no choice. How, how you can't blame Kyle Dubas. And you shouldn't be surprised that Kyle Dubas got, uh, got aggressive because his job's on the line and six consecutive years of losing out. They've got to, they've got to go for it. They've got a good team. They've had a good year. Uh, so yeah, they've got to still try to improve their team with the you know with the deadline coming upon us. I, I really think they have to still continue to try to improve their team to be a real contender. 